Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got something a little unique on the table. It's an HK VP9, you've seen those before, but this is the B version, and what the B stands for is button release. So instead of the little short paddle release that the original VP9 has, this has a button, which on the American market is more common and, and more popular. A lot of people don't like the little paddle release. This was new for 18, but they still seem to be a little bit hard to come by. They're still current production, they're on their site, but you don't really see them everywhere. So let's go ahead and talk about this thing. First off, we'll make sure that it's not going to have anything in it, and we'll go ahead and start describing it. It's a larger pistol. It's you know 7.34 inches long, 5.41 inches tall with the flush mag in it and it's 1.32 inches thick and it's kind of got this little swell at the middle of it kind of a sculpted grip it actually is really comfortable to hold and these swells are actually fully adjustable you know you've, you're used to the replaceable back straps that a lot of guns have this also has replaceable sides so it comes with three back straps one on it and two in the box this one's the large it comes with the medium of everything on it and then it comes with these little side panels if I can hold one so you can slide off these two side panels and replace them with these and they're curved to mold in nicely. You could theoretically have, let's say, a large back strap and medium side panels or any combination you want. This one has medium all the way around. So it's kind of a unique take on the replaceable back strap concept to be able to do that. Another thing you've probably noticed on this looking at it is it's got this kind of flare at the back. These are H&K's charging supports, and they say they're patented, though I have seen this concept on other guns before. But the concept behind it is, you know, you've got the serrations at the back, and you've also got serrations at the front. But when you bring your hand back, it hits those supports, and it's almost impossible to lose your grip on the slide. So if you have weaker hands or a little bit of difficulty cycling it, that's going to be a good setup for somebody like that. It's got a number of safety features. One of them you can see right here is the cock striker indicator, which disappears, and it's actually red, so it disappears when the, the striker is not cocked. It has the split trigger, which is part of the safety mechanism to prevent an inertial pull, and it also has the drop safety piston. I'll show you that when we get it apart. So it's got all the safeties that you're used to and a loaded chamber indicator. You see a little bit of red there. This will protrude when the chamber is loaded. I'll push it down a little bit, you can see the red. So it's got every safety feature that you're used to in, you're dealing with. No thumb safety, you know, like most of the striker guns, all the safeties are internal and automatic, which makes it really convenient. You pull it, you point it, you pull the trigger, and it goes. Keep your fingers off the trigger, and nothing's going to happen. It does have a four-slot Picatinny rail, and it has dovetail sights, so you can replace the sights. Now this particular one has yellow photoluminescent sights. They're a three-dot arrangement. And a lot of times these photoluminescent sights are kind of dull and faded. These are really bright, really easy to see. They stand right out. At the range, you know, even just taking it right out of the bag and putting it on the, on the table, it was nice and bright right from day one. These are really easy to see sights. And there is enough of a gap on the front sight blade to, you know, find your target. So the, I found it really easy to get this thing on target, get it where I was wanting to go and it has a very nice trigger so let's go ahead and demonstrate the trigger there's a little bit of take up just a very very short soft wall it's not super crisp like you know some of the glocks where it's a hard wall but i wouldn't call it creep it's a it's actually a nice crisp trigger just a little bit of softness in it, it comes in around five and a half pounds there's the reset. Now it has a tendency to bounce a little bit. You could, it's an audible reset, it's a tactile reset. It almost sticks just a hair at the end of the reset, so it'll cause you to bounce a little bit. But you're right back on the wall when you, take, when you clear the take up, and then you pull it again. Let's see if I can do that reset a little smoother. Right there. So there's still just a hair of take up before you're back on the wall, and then it breaks again nice and crisp. We found the trigger very easy to use. It's easy to use the trigger, stay on, on target. The combination of the ergonomics, the trigger, and the sights, it's really easy to put them where you want to put them. When I was doing the dimensions earlier, I neglected to mention the weight. On their site, it's 25.56 ounces with an empty mag. We measured it as 23.5 with no mag and 26.7 with a mag. So that's close enough. 
And you know, a lot of times you'll find variation in the manufacturer specs from reality, more or scale may vary either way. The magazines that it comes with, it comes with two magazines. They look like single stack, but they're not. They're a double stack mag, but you know, they don't have the alternating pattern for the witness holes like it's typical. And they hold 15 rounds. You get two of them, they've got a nice you know, solid polymer base plate, and they're well, well made magazines, nice and solid. And you get two of them. When you put the magazine in, it fits nice and flush, and the button release releases very nicely and easily. It's easy to get a hold of it, but at no point did I feel like I was going to drop the mag while I was using it. And it is reversible. Now, on the original VP9, which we've got right here, really the only difference between these two is the pedal release. The only thing that we found with this paddle is it's kind of on the short side. You know, like the PPQ, the paddle comes way out to here. So it's easy to just sweep your finger down. With this paddle, you have to kind of bring your finger back to get to it. But once you do, it works equally well and drops. By the way, the mags that are in this paddle one at the moment are the ones that come with the new one. The mags are interchangeable. So unlike when the PPQ switched from a paddle to a button where you had to get different mags, if you've got mags for this or you find you know the original mags on the market, they're going to work equally well. This particular one has the night sights, and I, you know they are available with both the photoluminescent and the night sights in either variation. And I'll show them to you side by side so you can see the difference. Get them to line up. There you go. It's kind of hard to line them up both for the camera, but you'll see the photoluminescent are nice and bright, and the night sights have the white ring around them. So unlike a lot of night sights which have a tendency to gray out during the day, these night sights are actually quite visible. So whichever one you choose is going to work well for you. So let me set the old one aside, that's not what the video is about, and back to this one. Overall, it's, it's a well done gun. If you like the VP9 but stayed away from it because of the paddle release, the B version gives you all of the features and all of the capabilities that you would have had. Now we did have one thing with this gun that was unusual for the VP9s. Uh, this one got up on the wrong side of the gun safe the first time we took it out to fire it. It was not fully cycling. It was short cycling to the point it was just reinserting the empty case back into the chamber. So the first mag we had multiple malfunctions almost every round. Second mag we had you know a malfunction or two and by the time we got to the fourth or so mag it was running flawlessly. So it had a bit of a break-in period, and I'll show you a wear pattern where I think is where it might have had a tolerance stacking or a burr that it took care of. The original one, the first one we had, ground one, it just worked. I'm not going to hold that against this gun. You know, the first box of 50 is kind of a freebie for most guns as far as I'm concerned. As long as after that they behave themselves and work, I kind of live with it. But you tend to see that more on the little small pocket pistols than you do on these larger frame guns. It's, it's a little less common, so I found that unusual. But beyond that, I'm not really considering it to be overly a big deal. Uh, but once we did get it running, we were feeding it aluminum, we were feeding it brass, and it just ate everything like the original one did. Takedown on this is actually fairly easy. Pull the mag, lock it back. Flick the lever. The lever is a little stiff, but once you flick the lever down, pull it apart. Here's the internals of the slide. It's got a, a nice long recoil spring. It is captive. And if I pull the recoil spring off, you'll see that it's a flat wafer. Pull out the barrel. First thing you'll notice out the barrel is it's well machined and everything, but it's got a nice, really nicely polished feed wrap. And the internals of the barrel, it's standard rifling and it's well machined. Actually, I made, I made a mistake. This one is polygonal rifling and it's well machined. You can tell the polygonal by the smoother ramps. It's kind of like little humps instead of uh, hard cut edges. So yeah, this one is polygonal and it's just well machined and smoothed. You know, these, these really are well-made guns. When we look inside, there's your drop safety mechanism. It's not a plunger style piston like many of the other guns. It's kind of an articulating arm, but we've had no trouble with this. It's worked well on both of the guns. 
and nice smooth machining, you know, polish loading ramp. Everything is just smooth and well done. We go to the frame. Right here in the corners, you can see where it polished itself a little bit while it was running. And I did find that a little unusual for it. So I will keep an eye on it, but once we got past that initial phase, it, it just ran. And by the way, we had taken it out, cleaned it, and oiled it like we do every other gun. We don't pull them out of the box and take them to the range. And then at the back, it's kind of a little bit in interesting setup. You've got your guides back here, and then a fairly complicated little fire control group. But it is a nice trigger, and it does work well. Reassembling it is as easy as taking it apart. Drop the barrel in. And make sure you get this centered. If you don't get it centered, you can have a little bit of trouble with it sticking, and it'll sometimes happen with you know various different guns. Lock it back, flip the lever, and you're back in business. Easy to live with, easy to maintain, fun and comfortable to take to the range. So the last thing I'll do is I'll kind of give you a comparison to one of its competitors. I'll put the mag in it. And we've got this Walther PPQ. And this is the M2 series, so it has the button release. And this is in the same price category as well. The MSRP on the H K is $719, but the street price is $549. So and the PPQ as well, it's it's up in the close to 700 MSRP, but you can routinely get them in the mid mid fives. So they're they're a price competitive gun. The PPQ has 15 round capacity as well. And if I set them side by side, other than the different shapes and the grip shapes, you'd, you'd think they were the same gun. The uh, H&K is just a little bit taller, but not significantly. And if I turn them this way, so that you can see the bodies, they both have that kind of that sculpted feel, that roundish slide, and the wings kind of add a little bit of width look to this one, but overall, like for ergonomic standpoint and overall size and shape, they're very similar. So if you're looking for the H and K and you can't find one, you know, figure out what the size of it is. You find a PPQ, they're going to be similar. Both guns are actually quite nice, but let's focus on the H and K. A good range gun. It is good for concealed carry if you're going to go inside the waistband. Of course, it wouldn't be really a good pocket gun. Inside the waistband, it would work. Nightstand gun, it'd be great for that. And it's a good range day gun. It's easy to handle, easy to control. Controls recoil very well. Nice deep beaver tail, so you're not going to get slide bit by this thing. Overall, it's, if you're going to have one gun to do it all, this is a good one gun do it all. You know, carry it during the day, slap it on your nightstand at night, take it to the range on Saturday. Clean it, put it back in your waistband on Monday. Just a good all-arounder. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell if you do. Check us out on Facebook and Patreon, and have a great day. Thank you.